Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, new video. So in this today's video, we'll be solving the problem Pythagorean triplet and it's a medium level question. And this is a problem of the day on Geeks for Geeks. The company tags are Amazon, Adobe and the topic tags are Aries data structures. All right. So let us go through the question. Question is pretty simple, like in understanding and even the solution is quite obvious. Uh, but it depends upon the time constraints that are given that we'll see now. So given an array ARR of n integers, write a function that returns true if there is a triplet A, B, C from the array where A, B, C are different indexes that satisfy A square plus B square is equal to C, uh, C square. All right. So you have a, uh, an example over here. We can even uh, see that uh, later. And uh, the main, uh, you know, the problem comes over here. Like the expected time complexity is O of n plus maximum of array i, uh, array i whole square. So maximum of array i whole square in the sense out of the given elements, you need to find out the maximum and that whole square. All right. That is the expected time complexity O of n plus maximum of that element, I mean maximum element whole square and expected auxiliary space is O of maximum element, like maximum of all the elements, like that is the expected time uh, auxiliary space. So once you see this particular statement, expected auxiliary space is O of max of array of i, that is O of maximum element of, uh, of all the elements in the array. So that means you can straight away go with this particular thing that you might be using a vector of size maximum array, maximum element of the all elements of the array all right so that is for sure but how are you going to use or not that depends upon the approach that you are framing right so this auxiliary space will give you that particular hint that you need to use a particular vector because there is they are clearly mentioned they have clearly mentioned that you need to use a auxiliary space so vector is one of the most ideal thing here because the question does not require you to use a set or map or something else that doesn't uh, is isn't actually required we can easily uh, you know solve it using a vector yes there might be approaches using uh, maps and sets but in that case time complexity may vary and even auxiliary space may vary like you might be using another extra space but here the only auxiliary space that i've used is a vector of size maximum element of the maximum element of all the elements that are present all right maximum element so that is the only extra space that i've used i have not even used any other extra space so according to the conditions that have been mentioned here i've framed the approach accordingly all right we'll see that later so you can even see the code on the right side so this is the now let us go through the example that has been given to us so 3 2 4 6 5 is the array that has been given 3 2 4 6 5 so only task is to return true if you find a pythagorean triplet so what is the pythagorean triplet a square plus b square is equal to c square so do i find any triplets is that a square plus b square is equal to c square yes i do so 3 4 5 let us substitute a for 3 i get 3 square let us substitute 4 for b i get 4 square let us substitute 5 for c i get 5 square yes this is 25 and this is 25 great so yes i'll be returning it true let us assume there is no 5 here there is some set particular element like 7 in that case do i find any other pythagorean triplet no so i'll be returning false in that case great so that is the question that's how uh, it boils down to very very easy question great uh, like easily understandable all right so now, what are the, uh, how are we going to uh, frame an approach per, for this particular thing? All right, how are we going to frame an uh, approach for this? Your, uh, the time constraints and the space constraints will give you a hint for this particularly. All right, so there might be several approaches. I'm stressing on this once again. You can use two sum approach, three sum approach. You can sort the array and do a lot of things. But the time constraints that have been mentioned here, O of n plus maximum element square plus and auxiliary spaces of uh, auxiliary spaces O of maximum element. So that gives you a particular hint, and this is the most optimal solution. Okay, the most optimal solutions time complexity and space complexity is this. Great. So we need to try to figure out such an approach that can be that actually suits this. Great. So this is the reason I say these particular two things, time complexity and auxiliary space, give you a particular uh, you know give you some hints 
undoubtedly because i have made several approaches to solve this question and i have minimized the things i have cut down all the things which are not required for me at the end of the day so in that approach in that way i found i have actually framed this approach you might not be finding this approach anywhere and but perfectly this particular uh, approach that i have framed or the algorithm suits this particular thing like x time complexity is o of n plus maximum element square and auxiliary space is o of maximum element of uh, like maximum element great so that is what i have done so let us frame this approach let us frame the approach how are we going to solve this okay so there are there is an element uh, there is an array given to us let us take this array itself, array itself 3 2 4 6 5 all right now my main task my main task is to find a b c all right my main task is to find main uh, like a b c but that's not the top most task i just need to see that if i am able to construct a square plus b square equal to c square or b square plus c square equal to a square or a square plus c square equal to b square if any of these three things are valid then i can return true all right i just need to return true i need not find those exact values i need not print those i need not store them anywhere i just need to say that i am finding a triplet such that two uh, that's the sum of elements of such that sum of squares of two elements is actually equal to third sum, third element square that's it i need just need to return that so what i am trying to do is they have clearly mentioned that uh, like um, the maximum uh, like n goes up to 10 power 5 and each of the array of uh, i can go up to 1000 that is also one of the thing that we need to make sure that we are making a note of it so my approach is i'll be uh, storing this particular things not as an exact value but i'll be storing that yes i have this particular value in my array so what am i trying to say i'll be using a so first step is first step is i'll be using a boolean array boolean array all right boolean array so what is this store this stores true or false true or false right true or false so what i'll be doing is i'll be taking this of size size maximum element size of maximum element so maximum element plus one okay if i need to you I, I need to even access this particular maximum element right so that's the reason i take size of maximum element plus one and i'll be updating it uh, those values with true if i find that particular value so let us assume i'm taking this particular boolean array all right so here in this case for this case we are trying to solve all right so the maximum element in this particular case is six so i need to have seven sized elements so this is zero this is one two three four five six great now what i'll be doing is i'll be having this to be true 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 and the other two things this is false this is false reason i do not have zero in my particular array i do not have one in my particular array i have two in my particular array that's the reason it is true same is the case three i have four i have five i have six i have that's the reason all of those are true in my boolean array great so that is how i am framing this that is how i stored this values instead of storing their particular squares that they are going to contribute all right each of them this three is going to contribute nine to the sum two is going to contribute four to the sum four is going to contribute 16 to the sum six is going to contribute 36 5 is going to contribute 25 right we each of the element contributes the square of its to the sum so instead of doing it i'm and instead of storing it what i've done is i've taken a boolean array and i'm uh, putting it as true if i find that particular element okay that particular index would be true if that value is actually there in the array that has been given okay that's how i store now second step now second step is to do o of max element like uh, let us assume uh, all right so max is what i'm uh, like uh, declaring this as the maximum element in the array maximum element in the array all right that is what i'm declaring so o of max square okay o of max square is what we have another uh, time complexity o of max square is what we have so how are we going to use this so i'll be using two for loops here two for loops in the array that has been uh, like we have constructed okay we have constructed so I'll be checking for each and every value of i from 1 to maximum element and j is like if I assume this to be height this to this would be breadth okay so from 1 to max as well okay so I'll be using two for loops i and j i denotes the height j denotes the breadth so i goes from 1 to max j goes from 1 to max so if a particular i is there in my array or not how do I check 
if that particular index is true or not all right that is the reason we have constructed this particular boolean array so if i am taking a particular height from 1 to max i need to check that particular height is there in my present in my in the array that has been given or not right so i can not i cannot choose height to be random number i cannot choose uh, to be a random number this is not feasible i need to make sure the height that has been that i am taking is there in the array that's been given to us so that we can check by with the help of this particular boolean array same is the case we'll be even checking for breadth all right we'll be even checking for the even the breadth i cannot take random i cannot take them i must make sure that particular breadth that i am taking is in the element is in the array that has been given or not great for that reason we'll be taking the help of boolean array all right so once we have found that a particular height that we have chosen and particular breadth we have chosen is in the array now we'll be had, having the squares so height square so what is the sum sum would be height square height square plus breadth square all right breadth square this is the hypotenuse right this is the hypotenuse uh, hypotenuse square okay this is the hypotenuse square this is basically hypotenuse square hypotenuse square now what is hypotenuse hypotenuse is square square root of height square height square plus breadth square isn't it so this is the hypotenuse now once i get this hypotenuse now i'll be checking this hypotenuse all right in the boolean array if this particular hypotenuse index is true or not if it's true that means i find this i had this in the array that has been given then i'll be returning true if i do not find this then i'll be going for another uh, set of elements all right if i find this particular element hypotenuse true in the boolean array that means i add this hypotenuse in the array that has been given so i'll be returning true that's it we have found three elements such that we have a height we have a breadth and we have a hypotenuse yes we can return a true we have found three elements great so that is how we are diluting it that's how we are diluting the uh, time uh, time complexity to just o of max square all right and if we do not find we will be exploring some other set of elements that's it very simple so i hope uh, you understood the approach very very basic approach we are just trying to find or different possibilities of height and breadth and we are making sure that particular height and breadth is there in the array or not that we are doing with with the uh, boolean array and now after that we are uh, trying to find the hypotenuse by taking the square root of height square plus breadth square and if that particular hypotenuse is there or not that we can check with the boolean array as well and if we have that then we'll be returning true or else we'll be exploring other points other uh, set of elements and at the end of the day if we do not find anything we'll return false all right so that is the same thing that i have done we can go through the code now in maximum is the max element that is there in the uh, ele uh, array and now vector bool squares maximum plus one false initially i have taken a boolean array and i am initializing all those elements with the false all right now for i'm going with each and every element int i equal to 0 i less than and i plus plus i am updating that squares of array of i as true because that means i am finding this array, uh, array of i uh, like i find that particular element index element in my particular array that has been given like this array i find that element that's what this mentions all right now i'm going uh, i'm doing a for loop two for loops for int i equal to 1 i less than or equal to maximum so if i particularly if squares of i is false that means that i do not have i in my array i do not have i in my array I do not have any so i will not be considering that as my breadth so i'll be continuing same is the case now i found this to be breadth all right now if i'm coming to this particular point that means i have found a breadth uh, height to my myself height or breadth anything okay so if i'm considering i to be height consider j to be breadth that's it so uh, i like if i'm coming to, coming to this particular point that means i have found my height i found my height. now i need to explore breadth so if squares of j equal to false again if i do not have that particular breadth in the array that has been given to me, uh, in, uh, given to me initially or i equal to j you cannot have i to be breadth okay that's for sure so if you have that you will be having root over x square plus x square let us assume height and breadth to be x and in that case it will be resulting in 2 root x great 2 root x so sorry sir x root 2 x root 2 x root 2 but is x root 2 is an integer no that is the reason you cannot have height and breadth to be same so or i equal to j in that case you do not need to check further just continue all right so if i am coming to this particular point that means i have found breadth as well i have found breadth as well all right so what is the square of that height i into i because i is what i am considering as height and what is the breadth square that is j into j okay even the variables have uh, written such a manner that it's very understandable and what is hypotenuse square hypotenuse square is just the addition of these two height square plus breadth square and what is hypotenuse hypotenuse is square root of hypotenuse square and 
if in case this hypotenuse comes out to be greater than maximum what is the maximum maximum element that is there in the area that has been given to us if that particular hypotenuse comes out to be greater than the maximum that means there is no chance that is there in the area that has been given right the maximum element itself is maximum and if your hypotenuse comes out to be greater than maximum that means that's not there in there so in both of the in that case we can continue or your hypotenuse into hypotenuse is not equal to hypotenuse square let us assume i am taking root over 37 this root over 37 is also 6 in computer language root of 38 is also 6 in computer language so what i am doing is i am cross checking once again if 6 into 6 is equal to 37 no so in that case also that's not valid if 6 into 6 is equal to 38 no that is also not valid but what if root of 36 is equal to 6 in that case 6 into 6 is equal to 36 all right so this hypotenuse into hypotenuse matches with hypotenuse square so in that case we can uh, you know we can uh, proceed further so if in case it's not matching or hypotenuse greater than maximum we'll be continuing all right so and then if it, if it's not the case if it is matching all right if it's not if it's matching as well as it's less than maximum all right if hypotenuse into hypotenuse is matching with hypotenuse square and hypotenuse is less than maximum in both of these cases we can proceed further and now we need to check if that particular hypotenuse is there in the array that has been given to us initially or not and if it is then we return true else we return false great so that is how we have boiled down the approach very very easy approach the time complexity is pretty simple we are using a o of maximum square right time complexity is o of maximum square o of maximum square plus for finding this maximum element we are iterating words like this star maximum element so for that we are doing o of n that's it and what is space complexity what is that extra that we are using this boolean vector that's it then what is that size that is also o of maximum element so we have used the same things that have been prescribed to use in the geeks for geeks we have used the same particular thing time complexity and space, com uh, space complexity all right so i hope you people understood if not watch the video once again you'll definitely understand very very easy question and very easy approach and optimal approach as well all right so we'll even submit the code for your reference and uh, let us wait for a moment uh, all right it's passing and yes and uh, for your reference c plus plus java python codes are there in the description you can even check out that uh, for uh, you know uh, uh, coding in different languages all right so thank you for watching guys stay tuned if there are any doubts feel free to message uh, comment in the comment section